Greetings, uh, good afternoon and welcome to this one's meeting of the LCRCA. Um, before we start the meeting, um, I have to go through the same sort of protocols that I always do. So um, the meeting will be broadcast live to the Combined Authority website and available for subsequent viewing. And by entering this room, you're consenting to being filmed and to the possible use of those images and sound recordings for filming purposes. Can members and officers please ensure that when you want to speak, you press the microphone and turn it off afterwards. And finally, can everyone ensure that their phones are switched to silent, please? Before we start the meeting formally, I thought it only right that we pause for a minute's silence as a mark of respect following a number of tragic incidents in the city region last night. Thank you, colleagues. Okay, item one, uh, and apologies for absence, and Trudy. Thank you, Metro Mayor. I've received apologies from Asif ha Hamid, Councillor Hardy, Councillor Grocut, and in terms of those members who are joining us remotely, we have Councillor Carla Thomas, Councillor Shelley Powell, Councillor Lu Louise Whitley, and Emily Spurl, Merseyside Police and Crime Commissioner. Welcome to colleagues uh, virtually. Item two is declarations of interest. Um, item three at the minute of the previous meeting and subject to the inclusion of Deputy Portfolio Holder, Councillor Louise Whitley being shown as present, could we agree the minutes of the Combined Authority on the 24th of September 2001, please? Um, four is um, mayoral announcements and it was actually back in September when we last met, so I couldn't possibly update uh, on everything that's happened since then. Um, but I'm going to highlight a few of perhaps the, the major issues, starting with the publication of the Integrated Rail Plan last week. And this, I think, was a week when the government's promise of NPR in full died. And I said at the time uh, of the announcement that we were promised grand designs and we've actually been offered a 60-minute makeover. And that's because... The plan doesn't deliver properly for West East connectivity. It doesn't give us the Liverpool to Manchester 20-minute journeys that originally were in the, the plans. It misses out two stations in St Helens and downgrades Halton. It fails on the capacity issues, getting freight onto rail, and it'll cause years of disruption uh, with very little gain, but will have a massive, massive detrimental economic impact on our area. So in short, it's not good enough. Um, um, we've said that we are prepared still at this late stage to work with the government. At TFN on Wednesday, we've offered a way forward that we think may be acceptable to national government. But let's hope that they revise and review the decision and accept our offer, because what we do have at the moment is not good enough for the Liverpool City region and not good enough for the 16 million people in the north of England. So moving on, some of you hopefully will see seen yesterday that the Liverpool City Region Command Authority working with our friends uh, and leaders of um, the local authorities across the city region and partners also in Cheshire, and War uh, Cheshire West and Chester 
have brought forward our commitment to a discharge-free Mersey by a whole decade. Now it's going to be 2030, and we've made enormous strides since in the sort of early mid-80s. Uh, Lord Hazeltine Has rightly described the state of the River Mersey as an affront to the standards a civilised society should demand of its environment. And it's clear that the ecology of the River Mersey today is a success story, but as recent public anger over the discharge of untreated sewage into rivers, watercourses and seas shows, we can't be complacent and we have to do all that we can to ensure that we care for our great river. So with that in mind, we're going to use the powers in our devolution deal to uh, work towards the elimination of discharges of untreated waste into the River Mersey by the end of the decade. Uh, and can I thank all the leaders for their support on, on this really bold move by um, the combined authority. Just while we are on the subject of the environment, it would be remiss not to mention that Councillor Baines and I, and um, I think uh, um, Mayor Anderson was there as well, and um, I think Councillor Wood, you were there the week before, but we went to COP26 in November, and the international uh, picture, the global picture, may have been disappointing for some, but it was clear at that event that people had started to recognise the moves uh, and the, the progress that Liverpool City Region is making uh, at becoming a leader on climate change. And genuinely, people were really excited about what we were doing. COP followed two really big environmental announcements in October, and we must now keep the momentum going. Uh, we can't let it slide again. The first announcement was myself and uh, Councillor Morgan. We're at Ford and Hale Wood, um, and they're going to be leading the charge to eliminate petrol and diesel cars, uh, the internal combustion engine, by making parts for um, the new electric vehicles, uh, the engines, the transmission units for the new electric vehicles. And the second of those huge announcements was something called HiNet. It's all right. I, normally, when I was Lord Mayor, I used to find people whose phones went off. So <laughs> at least there's uh, a contribution to charity from today's event. Um, but the, the second one was HiNet. Uh, and I think this went under the radar a little bit, um, certainly in national circles. But it's a project that could take 10 million tonnes of carbon out of the atmosphere every year and create some of the high value, high paying jobs that we need to see in the north in the next decade. So really exciting project. I'm also uh, continuing to make uh, my way across the city region whenever possible to get to all the boroughs and seeing some of the great things that the leaders and the councils are doing in each of those local authority areas. And I visited the Granby Adult Learning Centre in Liverpool last week, uh, which the combined authority supported the refurbishment of with a, a million pound funding. Fantastic, right in the heart, and I know uh, Mayor Anderson was there, right in the heart of the community, brilliant facility, and the sort of upgraded and really um, quality um, facility now that will encourage all of those people to realise their full potential to go in and, and to take education uh, back on again. That was fantastic. I also visited uh, CA funded project on Dunningsbridge Road in Sefton, and it was called Maisie Reach, uh, a logistics park that's attracting cutting edge businesses with really good jobs to the area. Um, there's going to be a second phase of this, but some of those businesses can go on to be global brands. It was really um, an inspiring, in all honesty, to meet some of them. And I once again picked up the, the trowel. Uh, I went to, um, to the Whittle, to Birkenhead, and Head, um, and I did a few um, days over there, uh, a few visits over there, and I went to the Docklands uh, development, a really exciting housing project with good quality, affordable homes that are really perfect for first time buyers and stuff. But um, the trial came out the bag and the young apprentice who was working with me, he claimed all of the, the bricks that I laid, so he, he got a few bob out of it. Um, <laughs> I'm actually in Halton on Sunday uh, when we'll mark the end of the, their year as Borough of Culture and the baton's going to be passed to Nosley, uh, who I think have got some 
really exciting things in their programme planned for next year, including a mass vow renewal at St Chad's Church on Valentine's Day, and that's the same church that I was married in back in uh, 1989. Uh, and so I'm looking forward to, to that. And lastly, um, thanks to David Baines for inviting me and, and Andy Burnham on uh, Monday to St Helens. It was a really good meeting. It was focusing on cross-border transport priorities for St Helens, Wigan and Warrington. I think there's some really good stuff that we could do together there. Obviously, with the plans that we've got for bus re-regulation and stuff on the trains for Major Rail for All, but some really good stuff uh, and announcements, hopefully, that will be made soon. And then, just on a final note, and apologies for having to end on, on something um, fairly sombre, but it would be hugely remiss of me not to mention the incident at the Women's Hospital on Remembrance Sunday. Uh, myself and Mayor Anderson were just across the way at the Remembrance Service in the Cathedral uh, when it happened. Um, and we can all be thankful that we're not holding another minute silence here um, because of what might have happened. And it makes the blood run cold when you think about it. But the city and city region were both tested in those few days after the incident. There were people who were trying to ensure that tensions were running high and that people uh, who were anxious were, were looking to, to scapegoat and blame um, certain um, communities. Uh, I'm sad to say that some even tried to use the event. They, they actually went along with them and um, there were some grannies there uh, and I think they were called Nans Against Nazis uh, and they showed them off. Um, it shows the spirit, doesn't it, of the Liverpool city region and certainly the people in that community. I don't think uh, we'll ever be led down that path. We are stronger uh, when we're together. Uh, we're known for our solidarity and resilience and our diversity is our greatest strength. So I don't think those dissident um, factions will ever seek or win uh, or, or divide us um, over issues like that. So. Um, a really, really busy few weeks. Uh, lots and lots of other things have missed out, but we will be pulling together sort of a, a summary of, of all of those um, uh, events that I've, I've been to. Item five, then, is uh, our first report, which provides an update on the recruitment of two executive directors, and our chief executive is going to take us through a verbal update. Thank you, Metro Mayor. Members, you have before you a report that updates on the recruitment for two executive directors and the recommendations of the appointments and disciplinary committees that took place on the 29th of October and the 19th of November. The committee are recommending that we uh, make an appointment to the post of executive director place to Richard McGuckin. Richard would join us from Stockton on Tees. And the committee are recommending on the, from their meeting on the 19th of November the recommendation for Dr. Aileen Jones to be appointed to the position of Executive Director Investment and Delivery. Thank you, Metro Mayor. Can we agree the recommendations are set out on page um, 19, please? Great. Um, item six is a report that seeks the approval of the final accounts for 2019 2020 uh, for the Command Authority. The tabling in the report represents the completion of the formal requirements of the command authority to sign off the accounts and follows on from the report tabled back in November 2020 when the draft accounts were presented to the CA for consideration. And John, you're going to take us uh, through that report or uh, if there's anything else for you to add. Thank you, Metro. Thank you, Metro. Mayor. Uh, yes, this item reports back on the final external auditor report and conclusion from the year 1920, which was delayed for reasons that were not within the combined authority's control. The important thing is that the report confirms the draft opinion, which is an unqualified opinion. Unqualified opinion is how the auditors describe accurate, which not only is a confirmation of the financial reporting being accurate, but also importantly that the issues around risk, governance and value for money were dealt with and reported properly by the combined authority in that year. So if there's any questions on that, I'd be happy to answer. Okay. Um, okay, can we agree the recommendations on page 25, please? 
Item 7 is the quarter 2 financial performance and the report provides details of the CA's revenue and capital performance for the period April through to September 21 together with the mid-year Treasury management strategy update and again John's going to take us through that report. Okay, thank you. Um, the key parts of this report are um, in terms of the, the revenue budget, there are a number of largely positive movements reported in there and uh, the combined authorities revenue budget performance and forecast outturn is still forecast to be within the budget that was established um, earlier in, in this year, but also revised at the September combined authority. A um, couple of those movements are significant around our major projects of uh, Tidal and Digital, where spenders had to be rephased to accommodate um, the delays that we encountered due to COVID. And that those rephasing is reflected in, in the papers. There's also some movements on the capital program, firstly around Seacombe Landing Stage, which forms part of the Eureka Works and the Ferries Modernisation Program, uh, but that can be accommodated within the existing capital program. And secondly, around Headbolt Lane, where, as you'll see from the recommendation, we now anticipate higher total spend than was previously reported due to escalating costs uh, within the rail industry. There is a recommendation relating to this scheme that will allow us to progress the works with haste and avoid any further delay on what is a really important infrastructure project that's funded by the Transforming Cities Fund. So, thank you. Any questions? No, it doesn't look like. Okay, can we agree the recommendations are on page 173? Item 8 is a report that considers the options available to the CA for the appointment of external auditors for 2023-24 uh, when the existing appointment arrangements end. And again, John's going to talk us through those options. Again, and finally, thank you, Metro Mayor. This is to formally seek approval from the combined authority to enter into the national procurement framework for the appointment of external auditors with the public sector audit appointments body, the PSAA. The recommendation is that we do enter into this national process. Thank you. Okay. Um, can we hear the recommendations that are on 197? Item 9 is the spending review and the autumn budget for 2021. And the government's spending review was a mixed one at best for the combined authority, uh, with some good news for the CA, but also some disappointing outcomes and continued uncertainty for our local authorities. This report sets out the overall position and Kirsty McLean is gonna take us through the report and she's online and uh, able to hear us, I think. Yeah. Thank you, Metro Mayor. The report sets out a summary of the government's spending review announcements and the implications for the city region. As you said, this was a mixed spending review from a city region perspective with some good news and funding allocated to the city region, but also some very disappointing news where strong bids, particularly for the levelling up fund, were not approved. Uh, and there remains some uncertainty around the details, including on local authority finance. I'll just highlight a few areas where we were successful in securing funding. On transport, the government announced the city region sustainable transport fund including 710 million for the Liverpool city region, which amounts to 454 pounds per head. On the levelling up fund, uh, very disappointing, there were strong bids which didn't get approved, but we have had three levelling up bids approved so far. 37 million was announced for an LCR wide transport bid, and ours was the only combined authority wide levelling up fund bid that we understand was awarded. There was 19 million for the Birkenhead levelling up bid, which will regenerate and transform the waterfront area. 20 million for the Liverpool City Council levelling up bid, improving the waterfront urban realm and cultural hub of the city. On housing, there has been an announcement uh, after the spending review, and we've been awarded 11.3 million from the government's Green Homes Grant Scheme, which will be split across our local authorities to fund work on homes, making them warmer and more energy efficient. And on net zero, government announced funding for carbon capture, usage and storage, and High Net Northwest was selected as one of the first clusters. Finally, we will also get 2.8 million of community renewal funding, which is the subject of another report on the agenda for today. And that concludes the highlights from the report. 
Thanks, Kirsty. Uh, any questions from any of the members? Uh, Councillor Morgan. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Metro Mayor. Colleagues, I'm grateful that this report highlights the fact that the spending review once again leaves the city region with no clear answers or certainty about long-term funding for councils. Once again, there was nothing comprehensive in this spending review whatsoever. Nothing to suggest that the government are ready to address the 10 years of cuts which they forced on councils like ours. Nothing that suggested that they understand or care about the challenges that local authorities or the people and communities we serve are facing. And absolutely nothing that suggests that they are serious about reducing inequalities through their so-called levelling up agenda. Perhaps, colleagues, we would be all better off moving to Pepper Pig World. Because as things actually stand, I am clear that the concept of levelling up is nothing more than a slogan for this particular government. What else can it actually be while they continue to ignore the need for long-term local government funding based on need in favour of pitting councils against each other for pots of money? The levelling up fund is just a latest example of this piecemeal approach with local areas being forced to fight their way through a prioritisation and decision-making process which nobody understands and which I doubt actually exists. Wouldn't it be more simpler and more honest for the government just to provide the required funding to those areas that truly need it the most? As the report says, a number of the local bids were unsuccessful, and that includes one for Knowsley Council's long-term plans for Heighton Village. The government's decision not to award the funding for Knowsley's project is nothing more than a disgrace. And as far as I can see, it is evidence of levelling down more than anything else. But before I continue, Mr Mayor, colleagues, I, I know that some of our local councils were successed, successful in, in securing funding from this process. And I want to be clear that I am delighted that they did. And as I know, they will deliver on behalf of the people in their local areas and the wider city region. But how this government can justify prioritising some of the least deprived areas in the country including, coincidentally, of course, places represented by the Health Secretary and the Culture Secretary, and then ident identifying Knowsley as one of the places most in need of levelling up is beyond me and beyond everybody who lives in our borough. In Heighton, we are well underway for planning and delivering against our ambitious plans, and the levelling up fund money would have accelerated those plans. But once again, the government has chosen to overlook the people of Knowsley in favour of more affluent areas in other parts of the country, just as they did with the previous bids for the Future High Street Fund and the Towns Fund. We have urgently requested feedback on why our bid was unsuccessful, and I'm really keen for the government to explain what places like Knowsley need to do in order to be treated fairly and secure the funding that we need. We have a clear plan in place to address some of the highest levels of deprivation in the country and a clear track record of successfully delivering against our plans, often in partnership with colleagues in this room today. So as I said earlier, I think the government's decision not to award the funding to the Heighton Project is a disgrace, but that will not stop us. Knowsley Council remains to commit and to turn in our plans for the local area into reality, just as we've done in Kirby and Prescott. Finally, at risk of repeating myself, the government's approach to levelling up so far has been nothing than a slogan, but it's still an opportunity for them to work with us and turn it into something meaningful. meaningful. Our agenda items this afternoon alone show how the city region continues to be an area which delivers on behalf of its communities with, with reducing inequalities at the heart of what we do. If the government really wants to know how to level up, colleagues, they should come and see us and listen to our ideas. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I think there was a lot of nods uh, around the room and, and similar sort of, of feelings. Why have a tier system and then ignore people who are in the most need, uh, identified by the government? Why pit people in competition against each other when that only costs more money for each of those local authorities that the government have identified as being in those higher tiers? What the transparency around the, um, the scoring mechanism? Because I think that's the really big one for us that we need to understand and, and the, the feedback on not just this, on a whole host of different things. Uh, and then where's the fairness in the system? Because um, there obviously isn't, and I think you're absolutely right. Um, it's not levelling up if more affluent areas get money and, and successful 
in bids when areas in desperate need are left even further behind. That's not levelling up in anyone's uh, book. So I think you've got huge support around the, the room in, in regard to what the government needs to do. I think you're right, though, uh, Graham. We do need to, to continue the dialogue with government, and it's great that Nosley is saying, but we still want to talk to you. We, we, we still need to understand better um, what the government wants us to do because that project is really important, not just to Nosley, but to a lot, the whole north, uh, the whole of the city region and probably the whole northwest because of where it's, it's situated uh, and certainly to those people who live around um, those parts as well. So, again, we, we'll work with yourselves, with government, and we'll see whether we can bring something forward, um, hopefully. The recommendations are set out on page 207. Um, can we agree those? Item 10 is uh, a project that we trailed at COP26, um, and it was the ambitions of us to finally try to harness the power of the River Mersey. Um, I'll, I'll leave um, the introduction to, to Councillor Baines, who was there the week before us, um, and then, unfortunately, Martin is not able to be with us, but Catherine is going to run through the report. Thanks very much, Chair. Um, I'm really happy to present this report on the potentially transformational Mersey Tidal project. This was, as you've said, uh, one of the key schemes we highlighted at COP26, which I'll be saying more about later on in, in the agenda. So to present this report, uh, as you said, we were expecting Martin Land to be with us, but unfortunately he's, he's unavailable. So I'll hand over to Catherine Furcuff. Thank you, Councillor Baines. Um, as you said, this is a really significant development project for the city region. There's a really strong and compelling case for low carbon sustainable projects and schemes such as Mersey Tidal are absolutely up there really at the cutting edge of, of what is possible. This paper provides one of a regular update in terms of progress with the, with the program of work. And as you see from the paper, it covers a wide range of technical um, areas, both in terms of the, the modeling, the business case, the environmental, um, and the um, significant financial business case that needs to be developed in order to take forward the program. I think some of the things to pull out are uh, in terms of the ongoing engagement around the environmental aspects of the project, really good stakeholder <coughs> engagement. Um, there are obviously you know, very strongly held views about projects such as this, but the team are working very hard and, and extremely well with key environmental stakeholders and really getting a really great range of, of good feedback, which has really helped to move on the project. They're in the phase now of doing energy, hydrodramatic and marine traffic modelling, which is giving them a really strong sense of what that energy yield could be from the project. And as we move forward into the rest of the autumn and winter, further work on that phase three will start to build up the developmental business case. And alongside of the funding model will give us a really strong sense early in 2022 of the scale and the feasibility of the project at its next stage. There has been really comprehensive stakeholder engagement, not only in our city region, but more broadly, as Councillor Baines referenced in terms of the work at COP26, raising awareness amongst government and other pot and potential funders, because what we need, as well as a significant funding to deliver this project in the long term, we need a national policy shift, and we're really pushing for that as well. So members can look forward to a further report in the new year. I think this is a, a really helpful update from Martin and the team and the recommendations just lead us really to note the progress um, and to support the continued work and to look ahead to phase four in 22, 23, 24 and 25. Thank you, Metro Mayor. Any questions, comments, concerns, queries? No? Okay. Um, can we agree the recommendations that are on page 225? Okay, 11 is um, our SIF quarter two update, um, and uh, Councillor Williamson, you're going to provide an introduction to the paper, and I think Aileen's going to take us through some of the technical detail. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Mayor. This report updates the combined authority on progress with dispersing the strategic investment fund. It also notes that the combined authority has been allocated £2.8 million pounds of funding from the UK Community Renewal Fund to support skills, communities and people into employment. This fund is the precursor for the UK Shared Prosperity Fund, which will replace, which will replace historic EU funding and is the subject of another paper on today's agenda. 
The interim executive director of strategic commissioning and delivery will provide further details on the SIF update. Thank you. Thank you. Um, section three of the report sets out the progress in deploying funding from the strategic investment fund. Approximately 18 million pounds was dispersed in the last quarter. It also notes the progress made in the development of the pipelines of future projects and officer decisions under delegated powers. Further details of these are set out in Appendix 1 of the report. I'd also like to just highlight two specific changes requiring combined authority approval. The first is the recommendation to extend the scope of the Inward Investment Facilitation Fund to large um, companies where there is strategic rationale. This will provide officers engaging with such companies more flexibility in our approach. And the second change I just want to flag is the updated approach in respect of people network following combined authority approval in February. Support for Kickstarter grants has been reduced from 600,000 to 200,000 and will now be funded through the Strategic Investment Fund. Thank you. Any questions for Aileen? No, okay, can we agree the recommendations on page 233? Item 12 is a report that sets out the progress of projects funded in the first year of the Brownfield Land Fund and also seeks approval for the shortlist of projects to allocate the remaining £34 million pounds of the fund. Uh, Councillor Morgan, you're going to take us through this. Yeah, thank you, Chair. I'm pleased to be able to outline the progress we are making across the city region through the Brownfield Land Fund. The Brownfield Land Fund is the city region's first evolved fund targeted for housing, with a total of £45 million over five years. And I'm delighted to say that today's paper shows that we're already making a difference with some of the first homes from our initial investment last year already being completed. Looking ahead, this report seeks to allocate the remaining £34 million funding we will continue to work closely with councils, housing providers and private sector partners to deliver a mix of high quality developments for residents across the Liverpool City region, including affordable homes and extra care. Our progress to date and our future targets of just over 3,600 homes show that the Liverpool City region is making the most of the additional funding and powers that have been devolved to us and provide yet more examples as to why the decisions which impact local people should be made at the local level. Colleagues, I'm delighted to move the recommendations in the report which would see us work to finalise grant funding agreements over the next few months. This will see us move to the next stage of the delivery against our Brownfield Land Fund, which I am confident will make, continue to make a difference to the lives of the people living in our city region. Thank you, Metro Mayor. So those recommendations are set out on page 243. Can they be agreed? Item 13 is the Community Renewal Fund, which was announced by the Chancellor and provides a bridging fund between European funds and the expected UK Shared Prosperity Fund that's just been mentioned. Uh, St Helens was the only city region place on the government's priority list, but the other parts of the city region were also able to bid and were being awarded just over £2.8 million pounds is heard by government for projects in St Helens, Halton and in Liverpool. And the report recommends the acceptance of this funding. Um, anybody want to add anything to that? Are we happy to accept that funding? Um, the report was circulated separately to the main agenda and so the recommendations are set out on page 13 of that. Uh, can we agree those please? Okay, item 14 is a report which seeks approval for a second phase of the Liverpool City Region Com uh, Community Environmental Fund, building on the success of the pilot which has benefited a range of local environmental projects across the city region. And I've visited a few of these, some unbelievable projects in all honesty, uh, and we've seen the impact of those um, being delivered at a, a, a ground level, if you like, and we want to continue to build on the success that we've previously had. So, Councillor Williamson, you're going to take us through the fund. And then I think, uh, as referred to earlier, Councillor Baines wants to provide an update on COP26 and the LCRCA activity at that conference. Thank you. Mr Mayor, this paper seeks approval for £600,000 for the second phase 
of the Liverpool City Region Community Environment Fund to be delivered in 2022, building on the success of the pilot, which has benefited a range of local environment projects across the city region. The fund was launched by the Combined Authority last year to build on the success of the LCR Year of the Environment. The fund's aims are to support communities to engage in a range of environmental activities, encourage long-term behaviour change and improve the environment in the city region. The response to the fund exceeds our expectations and we received over 150 bids, with 58 being selected through our assurance process. We will be delivering this next phase of the fund based on similar objectives, building on the lessons learned and improving delivery. We will be working closely with our local authority partners to ensure that the fund complements and supplements the good work that they are already doing. We are also working on developing a business case for a long-term self-sustaining fund, levering in private sector and philanthropic funding. We know that there is demand and opportunity to create environmental change at scale that will generally bring about lasting improvements to our community's well-being, sense of pride in their area, connection with the natural environment and support the transition to a low carbon economy. Thank you. Thank you, Chair, and, and thank you, Councillor Williamson, for your helpful update about uh, having another round of the Community Environment Fund, which I completely support and, and warmly welcome. The Community Environment Fund is just one excellent example of how our city region is leading the way on tackling climate change. Our leading role was clear when I attended COP26 in Glasgow earlier this month, uh, as well as the Liverpool City Region uh, delegation, which included the Metro Mayor, myself as portfolio holder, and Mayor Joanne Anderson. This was an important opportunity for us to showcase what we're already doing as a city region to tackle the climate emergency. And it gave us the opportunity to develop closer links with other important northwest, national and international stakeholders. At a dinner dedicated to the Mersey Tidal project, which we discussed earlier in today's agenda, I spoke to key stakeholders, including the Korean enterprise K-Water, who've successfully delivered the largest tidal range in the world, about the exciting opportunities that the project presents for generating a clean, green energy supply for our city region. And while at a Glass Futures event, I spoke in support of the world-leading project to create a global centre of excellence in St Helens to make glass the low-carbon material of choice. Work is underway on site right now. A stand featuring Glass Futures was the first thing seen by visitors um, entering the Green Zone exhibition area at COP, and we should be proud that a project supported by the CA and St Helens Council was in such a prominent location and subject to so much attention. The Metro Mer represented us on an international MERS panel and highlighted the high net project following its selection as a track one industry cluster. And he also took the opportunity at COP to raise the impact that improvements to public transport could make to carbon emissions. In addition to showcasing the work of the CA to a wide audience, COP26 also presented an opportunity to develop connections with organisations, businesses and people, particularly with our partners across the North West. We saw this in Runcorn when, as part of the official COP26 programme, we held a Northwest Regional Roadshow at the Heath, attended by Councillor Jill Wood, the Deputy Portfolio Holder. And I want to thank Jill for all her hard work on this issue. The Metro Mer has also announced plans to establish a Northwest Youth Commission to give young people a voice to lobby government to deliver a lasting COP26 legacy. It was a busy two weeks for the Combined Authority, and it's been the culmination of months of work from colleagues across the whole combined authority leading work with Cheshire and Warrington, Cumbria, Greater Manchester and Lancashire to build a compelling argument for continued investment in our North West net zero ambitions. COP26 might be over but we're more determined than ever to deliver the changes needed to achieve our ambition of reaching net zero by 2040 and I left feeling very confident that our city region is in a very um, leading position to deliver on those ambitions. Failure isn't an option and we're determined to do it. Thanks very much Chair. Excellent, two great contributions. Um, the one thing I'd say really surprised people, they were still at the, the stage of talking about what they would like to do. And when we were saying, we're doing that, and we're doing that, and we're doing they none of them were really delivering to the, the same scale uh, and ambition, it has to be said, that we've got in the city region. It was um, really well received, I think, across the board. So well done to everybody who participated in that. Um, can we agree the recommendations that are set out on page 253, please? The next report is the new road safety strategy for the city region to guide the work of the Merseyside Road Safety Partnership. And it's centred on the principle that all road users have the right to navigate our transport networks safety, safely. 
um, deaths and serious injuries on the road are preventable and are neither acceptable nor uh, inevitable. And we have, I think, between us, an awful lot of people who contact us about what needs to happen. So uh, the objectives are to reduce the number and severity of road traffic collisions, working to an overall vision, uh, zero vision of um, target by 2040, and no one um, should be killed or seriously injured on the roads in the Liverpool City region. And uh, Councillor Robinson has been working along with colleagues and partners across the city region, and uh, Council, sorry, Emily Spurrell, who's the Police and Crown Commissioner, is also online yet, she's just appeared. Um, so, Liam, I'll open up to you, and then we'll ask Emily if she wants to contribute. Yeah, absolutely, and, and thanks. Um, as you just mentioned, this is about bringing forward a new road safety strategy for the Liverpool City region, and very much was adopting an ambitious, uh, ambitious aspiration of the Vision Zero approach, acknowledging that actually avoidable road deaths and injuries should be reduced to the absolute minimum. And very much want to kind of thank all of the partners that have been involved. So that's all six of our local authorities. It's charities like Road Peace. Um, it's also the Fire and Rescue Service and the constituent uh, police uh, services. But equally, as you mentioned, um, Steve, I think it's absolutely right. We acknowledge the kind of energy uh, that particularly our Police and Crown Commissioner, Emily Spurrell, has brought to this in his adopting uh, a very, very ambitious approach. Um, there's a number of kind of central tenets to the, the strategy that we're proposing, very much about safe speeds uh, and how do we slow down traffic. Good examples of that across the region are 20 mile an hour zones that exist in places like Liverpool, Sefton and the Wirral. Also things like safe streets, how do we design out um, collisions and examples of that would be some of the school street uh, programmes that we've got uh, across the region. Also focusing on safe vehicles, um, that's partly about uh, trying to get people out of private cars and onto public transport as one way of reducing the traffic, but also looking at specific vehicle types that are more likely to have risk of collision, things like motorcycles uh, as a good uh, example. Also about safe behaviour and how we kind of promote much better driving standards as one other way of reducing um, accidents that, that can occur. But equally as well, um, looking at our post-crash responses, how do we work with the National Health Service and the emergency services in the event of an accident, how that is dealt with as quickly and learning the lessons uh, of those things as much as, as possible. Obviously, that's very much the vision. If agreed by the combined authority today, the next stage is to pull together uh, a detailed delivery and action plan of how this isn't just warm words, how we're actually going to do this right across the city region. And crucially, then monitor that those kind of actions are taken and how they are delivering. And one of the things that we are proposing is producing an annual uh, report around this where all the constituent partners have to feed in so we can monitor this very, very closely so we can get as close as possible to that Vision Zero approach by 2040. Thanks, Liam. PCC Spurrell. Thanks, um, Chair, and thank you, um, Councillor Robinson, for the introduction. I mean, just to echo, I think some of our colleagues have, have said already, this is a really important issue. Um, it was a really important issue that was raised to me um, during the election um, and obviously through my consultation, through my police and crime plan. So I've included it in there and I've made sure it's a priority for the police. But of course, what we know about tackling road safety is it cannot be done by police alone. It has to have that partnership approach. So I was really pleased to see that the um, road safety partnership have already started to look at the Vision Zero approach. It is ambitious, um, as Councillor Robinson has said, but actually all of these road deaths are preventable. You know, there is no reason why we should have the levels that we have. And we absolutely should be prioritising all the different aspects and, and bits that we that we can contribute to this agenda um, to try and make it our streets as safe as possible. So, um, you know, Councillor Robinson has said there is going to be an action plan. There's going to be a lot of work that sits behind this. But I'm just really pleased that we've got that commitment today. And hopefully, you know, colleagues around the table will um, endorse the report and just make it clear that it is going to be, it's a wholesale approach, it's a whole system approach. Uh, we want to make it priority uh, and we are committed to making sure that we do reduce our deaths to zero uh, as soon as possible. Thank you. Uh, any questions for anyone on this item? Um, if not, can we agree the recommendations on page 259? Item 16 is a paper that's asking for approval to tender funded training provision for employers in order to support key training needs in the city region. Mayor Anderson, you're going to take us through this report. 
paper six approval to launch a £2 million tender for the fully funded provision for Liverpool City region employers to meet their priority training needs and want to complete to progress the delivery through the successful provider. The LCR Skills and Apprenticeship Hub currently manage the Be More project, which is funded through the European Social Fund and Strategic Investment Fund. It supports employers and people in gaining and increased skills, promotes apprenticeship careers and opportunities, and the development of an all-age careers portal. A key strand of the project is to, to support LCR employers undertake training that will provide people with additional skills to support economic growth, recovery and growth. Through discussions with Liverpool City region businesses and a survey undertaken by the Growth Platform in the summer, a priority training support framework has been developed which captures key training needs of city region employers across four themes. Leadership and management, soft skills, which include mental health awareness, teamwork and critical thinking, business skills and hospitality. Liverpool City Region employers will be able to access these courses for free and the work is really a really important investment in priority training needs which will aid our economic recovery, providing upskilling and training opportunities to people across the region and supporting employers. And I commend the recommendations on page 285. Any questions for Mayor Anderson? Can we therefore agree the recommendations on page 285, please? 17 is the report that requests us to approve acceptance of an additional £2 million of grant from the European Regional Development Fund, ERDF, believe it or not, still going, uh, to extend the business support to our SMEs until June 2023. And the three schemes detailed in the report have provided support to over 200, sorry, 2,600 SMEs in the Liverpool City region since 2016, as well as developing a framework for inward investment to attract foreign-owned SMEs to the Liverpool City region. And the schemes are delivered in a public and private sector consortia with the aim of stimulating economic growth in the city region through job creation and improved productivity in SMEs. Um, is everybody okay to accept that funding? Can we agree the recommendations on 289? 18 is um, a report which is asking for approval for a tender to enhance the development of the Be More portal, which has been mentioned, it's been mentioned a couple of times today, making it more interactive, accessible, and a central resource for careers information. And Mayor Anderson, you're going to take us through that. This paper seeks to commission in the redevelopment of the Be More portal following a tender, ex tender exercise. The portal currently pulls together into one place all available apprenticeship opportunities in the city region, promotes careers, vacancies, manages case studies and ambassador activity. In 2019, the combined authority submitted a bid to secure European social funding to support the development and expansion of the Be More service. Following extensive stakeholder engagement and feedback on the site, a specification has been developed to improve the portal, making it more interactive, accessible and becoming a central resource for career materials. The redeveloped site will include detailed career information on key sectors across the Liverpool City region, including details of roles available, not limited to apprenticeships, how individuals of all ages can access opportunities and attract a wider range of applicants from all sections of our community. We will also work with the local authority partners so that each area has the opportunity to add details of activity and opportunity uh, for specific, specific to their area. We are seeking approval to procure a provider to implement these changes and I commend the recommendations of the, rep the report on page 295. Can we support those recommendations? 19, uh, Jill Cool is going to talk us through this one. Uh, Jill's our monitoring officer and the report, uh, I understand that there's an, an additional uh, recommendation for us also to consider. Uh, so we'll ask Jill to outline what that is. Thank you. The report has six recommendations contained in it currently. 
The recommendation A and recommendation E require unanimous vote because they are constitutional amendments. And the constitutional amendments relate to public question time being included for, in the rules for overview and scrutiny, and also clarification on the definition that we utilise for Deputy Chief Officer and Chief Officer. We then have three recommendations, recommendations B and D, that relate to councillor appointments. It's recommended that Councillor Friel be appointed as the Deputy Portfolio Holder for Transport and Air Quality, that Councillor Pearl be appointed to the Combined Authority Overview Scrut and Scrutiny Committee, and that Councillor Wall be appointed to the Transport Committee. We also, at recommendation uh, C, have an rec uh, update on Freeport uh, uh, for you in terms of the timing of the full business case being submitted to government, which is later than members were previously notified. We have a note about the equalities and the journey we are in relation to working towards improved arrangements for that. And then finally, we've just referenced the cessation of the emergency powers for the Chief Executive, which are no longer being used following the uh, in in introduction of those in the, in the pandemic start. Uh, with your indulgence, uh, Committee, I'd also like to ask for a, a tidying up exercise to be done in relation to the Constitution. You'll recall at Agenda Item 5 earlier on the agenda, we uh, have appointed a new Director for Investment and Delivery. Um, a number of delegations exist to the previous definition of that post, which was Strategic Commissioning uh, and Investment and, uh, and Commissioning and delivery so we're now looking to change that if we may um, if that's okay okay I'm going to take this in, in three groups then the first one um, needs to have a unanimous decision so can we agree the recommendations a and F please is that unanimous yeah okay then can we agree the recommendations B C D and E and then to agree that all of those delegations previously given to the Interim Executive Director of Society Commission and Delivery Post now be transferred to the newly created post of Executive, Executive Director of Investment and Delivery. Apologies for stumbling on some of that, but I think people got the gist of, of, of what we need to do. Okay, uh, item 20 is uh, public question time and we've got two questions from Unlock Democracy who have asked uh, that they be read out on their behalf. So Jill Cool is going to do that. Thank you. Um, two questions have come in, as you uh, mentioned. The first one relates to uh, constituent local authorities being requested to be reminded of the importance of the Overview and Scrutiny Committee and asked for consideration be given to reduce the turnover of membership of the committee. And then the second question relates to introduction of the attendance allowance for attending all of the committee meeting uh, or some sort of recompense for undertaking, uh, undertaking the important work of scrutiny. Um, so I'd like to first of all thank uh, Unlock Democracy for their questions um, on the scrutiny function in the combined authority uh, and, and its vital importance. Indeed, uh, I demonstrate this by attending each committee meeting that we've had to provide an update on the recent activities that both myself and the command authority uh, have been going through. And I also answer questions um, of committee members. With regard to the first question, the nomination of elected members to the overview and scrutiny committee is within the purview of the local authorities. And I'll ask officers to look across uh, the practice of other combined authorities with regard to payment of allowances by councillors who attend their over, overview and scrutiny committees and then we'll report back and the written response will be provided to unlock democracy within 14 days. Item 21 is petitions and statements of which we have received none. Uh, item 22 are the minutes of the overview and scrutiny committees on the 10th of March 2021 and the 14th of July 2021. Um, can we agree those? And can we also agree on 23, the minutes of the Transport Committee held on the 4th of March, the 15th of July and the 16th of September of this year? Okay, um, before we look to move into the restricted part of the agenda, as this is the last meeting of the Command Authority uh, of this year, 
I'd like to take the opportunity, uh, which I hate doing in November, of wishing everybody a very Merry Christmas and a happy and healthy 2022. It is recommended that due to the content of the next report, that they're considered as exempt in the absence of the press and public can I therefore ask for someone to move this resolution for the reasons set out in the agenda. So moved. Can I therefore ask that anyone sat in the public gallery um, and those attending remotely uh, now leave this meeting whilst those items are considered and can all filming cease?